my dear friends, I invite you to join us in celebrating the Lord's Supper. It is Monday of the third week of Easter. And I'd like you to join me, if you can, to offer Mass for ourselves. In this Mass, I'll be praying for you. Wherever you are, just know that this Mass is going to be offered for you and offered for your loved ones as well. I pray for the needs that you have, the needs that you need God intervention at this time. I pray for that. And I do have a lot of other intentions here. And I'll bring them to God in due time. But I will allow you the next 30 seconds to one minute to please bring your intentions and place them on this altar of God's grace. I have no doubt from this altar you will receive blessings upon blessings. That's not my promise. That's what God said. You will receive in return grace upon grace. For our opening hymn, I'd like us to sing Table of Plenty. Because on this table, God has plenty, plentiful blessings for every one of us. Home to the peace of heaven on earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that you need. Here at this table of plenty. Oh, come and sit at my table, where sins and sinners are friends. I wait to welcome the lost and lonely to share the cup of my love. Come to the feast of heaven on earth, come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that you need here at this table of plenty. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Dear friends, we gather to celebrate the gift of God's love. As we gather from wherever we are, across times and spaces, we pray that everyone may receive in accordance with your need the graces that God has in store for us. So this Mass is offered for your intentions. And to prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and be deeply sorry for them. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that putting off our old self with all its ways, we may live as Christ did, for through the healing Paschal remedies, you have confirmed Conform us to the nature of your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen, filled with grace and power, was working great wonders and signs among the people. Seven members of the so-called Synagogue of Freedmen, Cyrenians and Alexandrians, and the people from Cilicia and Asia came forward and debated with Stephen, but they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. Then they instigated some men to say, We have heard him speaking blasphemous words against Moses and God. They stared up the people, the elders and the scribes, accosted him, seized him, and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They presented false witnesses who testified. This man never stops saying things against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him claim that this Jesus, the Nazarene, will destroy this place 
and change the customs that Moses handed down to us. All those who sat in the Sanhedrin looked intently at him and saw that his face was like the face of an angel. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, Hallelujah. Though princes meet and talk against me, your servant meditates on your statutes. Yes, your decrees are my delight. They are my counselors. Hallelujah. I declared my ways and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts. And I will meditate on your wondrous deeds. Hallelujah. Remove from me the way of falsehood and favor me with your law. The way of truth I have chosen. I have set my ordinances before me. Hallelujah. 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 One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. After Jesus had fed the 5,000 men, the disciples saw him walking on the sea. The next day, the crowd that remained across the sea saw that there had been only one boat there and that Jesus had not gone along with his disciples in the boat. But only his disciples had left. Other boats came from Tiberias near the place where, he had, where they had eaten the bread when the Lord gave thanks. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him the Father God has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he has sent. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I'd like to wish you a very happy Monday. I hope um, you're still holding on. I know it's getting tired, more and more difficult, but at all times, I'd like you to, to see my little cot here. All right, it says, hang in there, because this little cot is hanging in there. It's hot, it's getting tougher, getting more difficult, but it says, hey, hang in there. Help is on the way. Today, I would like to reflect with you from the gospel reading. Um, there's something that I'm sure you have done, maybe as a child, are doing right now as an adult, or your child has done when they were children and are grown. So I like to, I like us to see what is happening here because this is something that every one of us here can relate to. You realize, just I like you to remember the one time maybe you did it or your child did it, where maybe your parents, you know, we, we depend on our parents a lot for our safety, for our provision, for everything. And you, as a little child, went to the playground and you were playing with your friends. And you know your dad was there or your mom was there or your elder brother, someone you know could guarantee your safety. And suddenly you stopped playing and looked around. And you can't see mom or you can't see dad. Just remember what happened, what you did. Very likely, more likely than not, you just screamed the hell out of everyone. And because that is the reaction as a child when you feel safe you relax you're doing stuff you're okay and then suddenly you look around you know you feel you no longer feel safe not because there's any danger but because 
you now realize the person who guaranteed my safety is not there. That's why you either scream, yell, cry, get angry, get into a tantrum. And sometimes when you even see your parents, you throw stuff at them because they left you to yourself. Maybe you did that. Maybe um, your child did that to you. Now, that, that's see what is happening here because very often that's how we behave with God. All right. When we look around and it's not here, we feel like we are alone. We, we, we behave like that. We get into this, we, we, we get into a panic and we're looking everywhere. Where's he at? Where's he at? Sometimes that's how we behave. And, and maybe you've behaved like that during this period, during this encounter. So watch and see what is happening here. Now, these 5,000 guys had come to Jesus. He had met their need. Now, they saw him as a source of meeting needs. All right. Yeah, we have him here. And we're going to get as much as he is here. We are okay. We're going to make sure we get our needs. So they wake up the next morning. They didn't see Jesus leaving because I'm sure some of them were sleeping with one eye open. Just to make sure that they saw where he where They saw him leave. But Jesus left and no one saw him because he didn't get into a boat. He just walked on top of the sea. And... That's sometimes how our parents also do. When they put you to bed or they allow you to play, they just sneak. They don't let you know they're leaving. They quietly leave. And then you go into a tantrum. <laughs> so Jesus quietly leaves. He does not tell them he is leaving. They don't see him leave. They only saw the disciples leave. So the next morning, they saw that there was a boat there that Jesus would have used and he didn't use it. They were like, I'm sure there was a panic and a commotion. Where's he at? Somehow, they figured out where the direction the disciples were going. And they did what most of us will do. We will run to places we think our parents will be. All right? We will know if dad is not here or mom is not here. Where will they be at? That's where we run to first. And if we don't see them, we run to the next place. We make that judgment of likely places where mom is going to be or dad is going to be. So that's what these guys did. So they ran and in all kinds of directions and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. I'm sure they know that that's where Jesus would normally go to get some rest. So they went to Capernaum. And then when they found him, they said, Rabbi. They said, Rabbi, when did you get here? It's almost like you would react to your mom or to your dad. And in this case, we react to God. Why have you left us alone? You know, why are not here helping us? Why, why do we have to fight all by ourselves? So sometimes that's our reaction. That's the emotion we share. And, and Jesus looked at them. And knowing how that, their relationship to Jesus was now of dependence. Now, dependence in the wrong sense. We do, we do depend on God. But we don't depend on God as though we have nothing else we can do for ourselves. God has given us control over a lot of things that he expects for us to do ourselves. But there are times some of us, you know, we outsource even the things we should be doing for ourselves, for our children, for our marriages, for our lives, for everything. We just outsource all of God should be doing all of that. Now, Jesus knows, the Lord here knows what his job is. And his job wasn't going to be defined by these 5,000 guys. He already had a job title given him by the Almighty God. He will not allow others to define his job title. So when they came to him and said, when did you get here? He says, I know why you're looking for me. As far as you are concerned, I am no more than a miracle or a wonderful, a wonder worker. I am no more than a chef just to meet your own needs. But there's something more important that you should be looking for. Yes. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God. Don't seek first food or material things. Yeah, those ones will come. But seek first the kingdom of God. And when you have gotten the kingdom, then everything else will be given unto you. Now what these guys were doing, they were turning things upside down. They were seeking everything else before the kingdom. So what Jesus was trying to, hey, my primary job for you is that I lead you to the kingdom. That you believe in what I'm offering you. It's eternal life I'm offering you. Now, when you get that, that's fine. Then everything else suddenly 
will be added. Everything else will be in like a bonus for you. Now, there are so many times where we as believers, you know, reduce the role of God to just our protector. So, so in a sense, we, we, our relationship with God becomes contractual. Well, if I do this, he's going to do that. He gets that. So there's a contract. Now, God wants us to recognize what this is about. This is not about, okay, if God protects me from this virus, then I'm going to praise him. If God does this, then I'm going to do that. If God will only do this, then I'm going to do that. That is us trying to define the role that God has in our lives. And God here in this text is rejecting that. He says, there's something more that I'm offering you. It's more than the protection over this virus. It's more than anything else that you may be going on right now. But I understand the panic that you and I are experiencing right now. And God understands that. But he also wants us not to forget what his name is. His name is God. And he has something greater to offer us, which is life with him forever. That's far more important than anything else that you and I could get from God. And it says, if you have gotten eternal life already, signed and sealed, then everything else that you're looking for will be given to you. But we must not forget that God ultimately is offering us eternal life in Christ Jesus. I like how Jesus ended that the questions. He questioned them. And then they said, what can we do to accomplish the works of God? What can we do? That's a question I expect you to ask, me to ask. So what have I been doing for all of my life right now? Have I been like this child who just woke up and realized, where's my God? Or who has defined God only as a one who meets my needs? So, so how have you defined your relationship with God? I need God. So he is only here as the one who meets my need. And I am happy with him and I praise him and I sing his good. I, I glorify him when he meets all my needs. When he doesn't, then I'm angry or I'm calling him. I'm, I'm just bailing out of something else. So today, God wants us to recognize what we also bring. So the question was, what can we do to better accomplish the works of God? That's a question I want you to ask. That's a question I'm asking myself, Philip. What can I do to better accomplish the works of God? So what can I do to expand and to, to, to expand and to grow the kingdom of God? Not just me waiting for God to do this and do that and do that and do that. What can I bring also to this kingdom without having to need anything from God? Because God will do what God will do anyway. But he doesn't want me to relate to him as just one who is there to meet my needs. What can I do? for this kingdom, for nothing, expecting nothing from God. And then we will see, because God can never be outdone in charity and in goodness and in generosity. That is what the Bible says. But what can you better do? What can I better do to accomplish the works of God? As always, I'd like to remind you that you are the delight of the Almighty God, that God loves you very much. Let us pray. Most merciful God, just listen to all our concerns today. For the times we have defined our relationships with you, only in terms of one who meets our needs, we are just so sorry for reducing you that much. We beg, O oh God, to help us to understand that what you offer us is far greater than anything temporal, anything physical, anything material. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for people who have brought their intentions today, O oh God. You know all those needs. We beg you, dear God, that from this altar, they will receive in return, based on the promises you have made, grace upon grace for every blessing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all those we have promised to pray for, people who we have told we're praying for, people who need our prayers at this time and have not asked that you, O oh God, may look to them, may look at them with kindness and mercy, and hear where they are hurting, and see where they are bleeding, and please bring them your comfort and your healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Be gracious to us, O oh God. Hear these concerns we have, we have raised. 
please accept them and accept all the others we carry every day in our hearts because we bring them to you trusting that you a loving merciful kind and compassionate god will hear and grant them through christ our lord amen Blessed thy Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made, which will become a bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed thy Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. May our prayers rise up to you, O God, together with these sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to Lord you yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of life rise to eternal life. And the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death. And in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the hymn of your glory as they are named. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth, are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up to you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice. I want to know giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph our spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, for glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us rise and pray in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your how peace I may be in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of that peace. From me to you, peace be with you and your families. Amen. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers. Look up and behold the Lamb of God. This is Jesus, our bread of life. He takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Amen. Now, and for all of us who are participating, from afar, I invite you to lift your heart and invite Jesus into your life. You open, I invite you to open your heart and receive spiritually the blessings of his presence. Gracious God, you know your children, you know their needs, you anticipate those needs. I beg your mighty God, that as they open their hearts and their lives to you, that you may spiritually nourish them, that you may spiritually heal, that you may spiritually strengthen, that you may spiritually refresh, that you may spiritually bless them, O God. And as you do for them, may you do for every other intention that they bring to you today. For we ask all of this through the same Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
before the final blessing. Um, today I was unable to share information about this mass sooner because it's been very crazier. But um, today I am going to later today I will send and be scheduled for masses throughout the week until Sunday. So I would like to end by reminding you if you ever forget everything I say each day that you don't forget this one truth no my what God said it that he delight in you you are the delight of your God and he loves you very much the Lord be with you and with your spirit to the prayers of our blessed mother and Padre Pio Almighty God bless and keep you the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. Go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our closing hymn, we will sing, Abide with me. Abide with me, fast falls the eventide. The darkness deepens, Lord with me abide. When all the help past fail and comforts flee, not all the helpless who abide with me.